Hi, how is everybody today? I'm glad you're here with us. We've got two great books to look at today. So let's go ahead and get started. The first book is on ocean life. Oh, look at this picture of a seahorse. It says squid. A squid has eight arms. It is a cousin of the octopus. It shoots out a dark inky liquid when it is afraid. That's the squid right there. It says here's our word power. Inky, black liquid that looks like ink. Okay, so that's the ink they've got right there all around. Tuna. Tuna are saltwater fish. Tuna live in both warm and cold water. And down here it says saltwater, living in the sea. Some tuna are as heavy as a milk cow. Wow. Blue tang. This is a pretty blue fish and it's born yellow. Blue tangs turn blue as they age. Dory in Finding Nemo is a blue tang. Word power, age, to get older. Let's look at that word. And that's how they start out right there, the blue tang. And they turn blue as they get older. Blue crab. Blue crabs have blue claws. They have 10 legs and are great swimmers. A blue crab loses its shell when it grows. A bigger shell takes its place. This is called molting. Molting is trading an old shell for a new one. Whale shark. The whale shark is the biggest living fish. It has a lifespan of 70 to 100 years. Lifespan, how long an animal lives. Whale sharks have, been, have big mouths and tiny teeth. They eat plants and small fish, but they don't hurt people. Moray eel. A moray eel looks like a snake, but it is a fish. It has strong jaws and sharp teeth. It also has a fin on its back. It opens and closes its eyes to breathe. And it says fin, a body part that helps a fish to swim. Nurse shark. Nurse sharks don't move a lot. They find small fish to eat at the bottom of the ocean. Scientists do research on nurse sharks. Sometimes nurse sharks bite divers. Research, studying something to learn about. Beluga whale. A beluga whale is also called a white whale. Belugas are born gray or brown. They turn white around five years old. Beluga whales live together in pods. They talk with lots of noises. And it says the word power word over on this page is pods or groups of whales. Sea coral. A sea coral is an animal with no spine. Sea corals live close together and form reefs. Many sea animals get food and shelter from coral reefs. And down here it says reef, a sea neighborhood formed by corals. I've been in a coral reef, they are amazing. Anemone, a sea anemone is an animal, but it is named after a flower. A sea anemone has tentacles that help it catch food. It moves slowly and often stays in one place for a long time. And then down here it says tentacles, long organs that touch, see, smell, or taste. And back here we have our glossary. Let's look at this. Glossary. It says inky, black liquid that looks like ink, salt water, living in the sea age to get older molting trading an old shell for a new one 
lifespan, how long an animal lives, fin, a body part that helps us fish swim, research, studying something to learn about it, pods, group of whales, reef, a sea neighborhood formed by corals, and finally tentacles, long organs that touch, see, smell, or taste. Okay, the end. That was a great book, and it was called Ocean Life. And I've got another book on the ocean here that I want to look at with y'all too. It's called Paddington Set Sail. Oh, it's got great pictures. One morning, Mr. Brown had a surprise. We're taking a trip to the beach, he said. Paddington, Jonathan, and Judy cheered. Miss Brown and Miss Bird were excited too. Paddington had never been to the beach. He did not know what to bring, so he packed everything. Soon they were on their way. Paddington poked his head out the window. He sniffed the salty sea air. At the beach, Paddington got a pail, shovel, sunglasses, and a float. He was ready for anything. The tide was low, so they went in the water. Jonathan and Judy splashed and swam. Paddington floated in the waves. At lunch, Mr. Brown had a great idea. He said, let's have a sandcastle contest. Paddington, Judy, and Jonathan would each make a sandcastle. The biggest castle would win. Paddington wanted to win. First, he found a perfect spot. He dug a moat. He carried pails and pails of sand, and he made walls and windows. Paddington placed his hat on top of the castle. Finally, he was done. Paddington's big sand castle was perfect. Paddington sat inside his castle. Sand castle work was hard and he was tired. Then he fell asleep. Oh no, the tide had come in. It knocked down Paddington's sand castle. It carried Paddington's pail out to sea with Paddington in it. There's Paddington, and that's him in this pail. The Browns were worried. It was getting late. They found Paddington's hat, but could not find Paddington. Where had it gone? Where had he gone? Then the Browns spotted. People gathered near the pier. They ran towards the crowd. It was Paddington. People believed that Paddington had floated all the way across the sea. They took his picture. Did you float here in this pail, a girl asked. Yes, I used my shovel as a paddle, said Paddington. And that's him there telling everybody. The sun was setting and it was time to go home. Did you enjoy your trip, Paddington asked Judy. Yes, not many bears go to the sea in a bucket, he said. The Browns were so happy to have Paddington back. Today's trip was a bit shorter than when you came from darkest Peru, said Miss Brown.
Paddington did not hear. He was fast asleep. The end. That was a great book. It was called Paddington Sets Sail. I hope you all have a great day today, and we'll see you tomorrow. Goodbye.